So we're in 1969. 69 was quite the watershed year. Um, you would not believe that these two events happened in the same year, much less, even less than a year. They, uh, they were Woodstock and Altamont. Uh, I attended both. Um, attended is kind of a weird word. It's like you, I, I participated in both. They, uh, I went to Woodstock as a fan. You know, I was just starting photography. Um, I had never seen anything like it. I had not understood what was happening before it and we just the, the word on the street in New York uh, was this this great festival and we in those days everybody was fans and and the availability of, of artists to the public wasn't that great you know we didn't have big festivals then there was one or two spotty ones here and there and we've you know we heard of, of, of some but we didn't have anything of our own and in New York, you know, the Fillmore was going, and uh, so we were getting a lot of word of mouth um, that we're, like all our favorite bands were going to be at this place, you know, in Woodstock. Um, so we all, you know, we went and got tickets. I think I, for the three days it was like $17. Um, and, uh, you know, drove up, and it was the most amazing. We, we started following, so we heard the through it was closed because we were all listening to AM radio. And uh, so it's just saying that all the roads are closed and, you know, but we didn't care. This was, all our bands were going to be there. It was so much fun. And uh, so we said, yeah, let's go. So me and my buddy, we had this old 49 Ford pickup truck and we drove and we started seeing signs, little cardboard signs and driving through the woods. And we were, you know, avoiding traffic. We were coming in. Next thing you know, the whole place is laid out in front of us. There's all the crowds and people walking around and we made it. You know, no, no problem. And I'm seeing the crowd. and I go, these are my people. I mean, these are like all. There wasn't anything weird about any anything. It was just like these are our people. You know, and we all came to see this music. So, uh, and I was just thrilled that I was taking photos of all kinds of things. And you know, um, I didn't even consider taking the pictures of the band, even though that's really my purpose. It was like oh, the music, you know. But there was so much other stuff going on. So I, I would take shots of different things, and you know, uh, if I knew a particular artist was going to be on stage, I'd be, want to be close. Other times I'd go to the back. You know, I'd be way up on top of the hill. But the thing about Woodstock is that if you wanted to be down in front, you could walk through the crowd. They would, the people would let you go. There was no, no hassles about anything, you know. And um, so there's one shot I took of uh, Joe Cocker, who was at, at his absolute peak at that time and so he was singing and uh, Max Yasger is in one part of the frame and I thought that was the greatest thing that the, the the owner of the farm that this is all on and he happened to be ancient he was probably in his 50s you know at that time um, was letting this all happen and he was appreciating what was going on with the, the most bizarre front man in, in the music world at that time so um, anyway, so that was just as wonderful as it could get, you know. A few months later, and so I, oh, let's put it this way: everything I took at that that at Woodstock was in color. I was taking Kodachromes and just beautiful color film. A few months later, I'm at Altamont in California in December, and I took I think three rolls of film, all in black and white. And if you look at any of my contact sheets, not one person is smiling in any of the shots, except there was this one uh, documentary camera guy who was shooting a film at the time. And he, was, he had the biggest grin on his face because he knew this is, this is the stuff. You know, all hell's breaking loose and he's capturing it, right? Uh, nobody else in any of the shots is smiling which is a total 180 degrees from Woodstock. So you got color from Woodstock, you got black and white from Altamont, you know. Um, it was uh, a world of difference, and, it, and both musically and socially. You know, the, the attitudes were completely opposite, you know. Uh, and, I, and I also learned a lot just from that, you know. 
At Altamont, there was no backstage. I mean, anybody could walk anywhere they wanted to. Um, I, I was shooting, I shot the Stones back, backstage and stuff. I also walked with CSNY up to their helicopter. And as I was walking with them, just taking snaps of them, uh, I, I'm looking through the viewfinder and I see a Hell's Angel coming right at me. And he puts his hand right against my camera and shoves me back and David Crosby yells, leave him alone, he's with us. <laughs> and to this day, anytime I see David, I thank him. <laughs> you know? So uh, it was that kind of a event. And that's kind of how the, the 60s ended for me. I said, okay, I'm gonna just concentrate on the music because that's exactly what what's needs to be focused on.